Thank you for joining us for another edition of UTA News. I'm J.R. Asusena. And I'm Lauren Ailes. UTA News looked into some recent allegations about the university's first president. Investigative reporter Mason Brighton joins us in the studio with more on the story. Thanks, Lauren. In the last few weeks, allegations of racial intolerance against the university's first president have dominated student media. UTA News investigated these allegations and had the chance to sit down with a student who brought this all to light. Here is my report. A resolution was recently introduced to the Student Senate with the purpose of changing the name of the E.H. Hereford University Center. One of the main reasons for this is because of the KKK's alleged presence on campus. At the end of the day, they are calling themselves the KKK. On campus, the KKK stood for the Campus Club Cadets, not the Ku Klux Klan. They knew exactly what group they were trying to emulate, regardless of whether or not they were attached to the Klan. This was around 1948 to about 1952. This can be seen in social calendars from the time. They engaged in social activities, just like other clubs on campus. While their name was the Campus Cadet Club, they most often used KKK. All of their events, KKK dance, KKK nightclub. With the club not having a direct link to the Klan, I wanted to know how far their influence actually reached. So they were actually in charge of the military balls for a certain point in time in the late 50s, from like 54 to 56. In 1956, the room reservation for the military ball was not made by the Campus Cadet Club, but in fact, by the Officers Club. According to a listing of school organizations from 1955 to 1956, the Cadet Club was not even active on campus. The Campus Cadet Club, the Davis Hall Klansmen being on campus, specifically being restarted by Hereford as they were applied to be renewed and he approved it, as he can do. Upon further review of the Rules and Regulations Handbook from 1951, I discovered that clubs were approved by the Executive Faculty Cabinet, and not directly by President Hereford. Another claim brought forth by Mark is the adoption of the rebel mascot and other Confederate symbols by the university. So ultimately he puts in the summer with the collection of students and faculty to decide what should potentially the, uh, the theme be. And they came down to two uh, options, the cadets, and the rebels. In 51, it was the students who had the power. President Hereford called a meeting of the students to vote on a new mascot. The students voted for the rebels over the cadets. And the students, due to the fact that this is segregated, that this is the Old South, happily accepted. ASU didn't integrate until 1962. So it is not unreasonable to think that a university in the early 50s would adopt a mascot honoring Southern pride and a year later adopt the battle flag as their school banner. While their claims are rooted in history, their conclusions misrepresent the facts. Resolution 1818 is currently being reviewed by the Academic Affairs Committee, and if approved, will be voted on by the Student Senate. Reporter Mason Brighton, UTA News.